Attention all listeners, this podcast is now sponsored by the author of XI, a collection of poetry on being human, written by Andrew Joseph Zaragoza Jr. Release date is going to be August 15th. Pre-order is available now. More information located on the bio. Thank you, and looking forward to hearing from you soon. Now on with the podcast. Okay, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Miles Four Podcast. It has been uh, a cool minute since we've uh, sat down with some Knots folks, man, and we, we miss our Knots Knots people, um, and we want to keep that positivity going, going forward with uh, the cancellation of of some major haunts out there. Uh, of course, today just got announced the Universal Studios Halloween Horror Nights just got canceled. Both coasts, uh, Universal, Hollywood, and Orlando. Very sad, but it's for the, the sake of safety of all guests and performers and um, all the, you know, behind-the-scenes people alike. So they're doing it for the best. But today we want to keep that positivity going with some good old memories from past years. Now today on the on the show we have very special guests all the way from Carnival. <laughs> Rebel, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Now, first and foremost, I have to say, Carnival is probably one of the greatest scare zones you'll ever see. <laughs> it's definitely interesting to be in too. Right. I mean, you, I I see, I've seen. I, we've gone multiple nights. I've seen so many characters uh, in and out of that scare zone, and it, it just the madness that goes on in that scare zone is just. It's something, man. You have to like really be there to really experience that madness uh, firsthand. Oh, yeah. it, 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 I love it. So, well, let's just jump right into it. Like, when when did you know you wanted to to be a scare actor? Oh gosh, probably the first year I visited, which was only back in probably 2014, was my first time visiting. And I know a bunch of other scare actors have been going for years. I mean, since probably early 2000s people have been going and so i kind of felt weird because i'm all i've only been going since the past like six years or so but as soon as i like walked in and saw just everyone running screaming all that stuff that's kind of when i was like i think this would be a pretty fun thing to do right i mean and that's that's just a carnival brings that excitement to guests um every time you they enter those gates man they they bring you the, the screaming and the and the and the laughter and of course, the the scaring, and it's mm-hmm. one it's one of like I said, one of my favorite scare zones. I remember we would go to, uh, by there a couple times uh, every night that we went just to see what's up and, and how everybody was doing and and uh, what we can uh, capture on on film. Uh, so you you joined twenty fourteen. What was the first thing that you did in twenty fourteen? Well, I started going as a guest in twenty fourteen. My okay. first year was twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Okay. Tw- yeah, I was in both Tooth Fairy and Voodoo, but I was only in Voodoo for the first two weekends, and then they actually ended up transferring me over to Tooth Fairy because there was an open spot over there. Nice. So, Tooth Fairy, Voodoo. Tooth Fairy, man, from what I remember, was a solid maze. I think what was cringy to me all the time going in that maze was the, the sound of the drill. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Like, like there's still nights to this day I still miss hearing that. It, it kind of got irritating at times hearing it all night long, but... Once it's gone, you miss it. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where, like, when you'd go in, you'd hear it, and it just had that like, like fingernails scratching chalkboard effect on mm-hmm. you. That like really puts you into that, to that world of this of the tooth fairy. And yeah, I remember going through that maze, and it was just like hearing that. I was just like, oh god, I'm in, I'm in for it now. Going through this mm-hmm. one. Um, so 2016, you come in the doors, you do tooth fairy, then you return 2017, you're on voodoo, and then you go back to tooth fairy. Um, I mean, obviously they saw the talent in you to bring you back to Tooth Fairy because... Well, so what actually happened was I was in both Tooth Fairy and Voodoo in 2016. In one year, I was in two mazes. Oh, nice. But 2017 was when I started in Trick or Treat. And okay. that was the first year they did the lights out thing. Right. Which we didn't really know how that was going to go over. We all thought, you know, people aren't really going to be like interested in it. What if it doesn't work? But... I guess they liked it enough to bring it back the next year because I was also in it 2018. 2018. So 2019 then, that was your first year on streets. Yep. Wow. 
that that's uh, quite the journey, especially because Trick or Treat of uh, being a fan favorite, and you were looked like you were part of the the team that got to close it out then, as yeah. well. Um, sadly, I never got to experience Trick or Treat with the lights on effect. I really wanted to. Really? Really wanted to. I mean, I experienced Trick or Treat prior to that, but I never got to spe- experience it with the lights out effect. And I really wanted to because I heard so many people told me it was such an awesome experience that uh, you, you, you couldn't miss that, man. Like, that was something that you really um, had to see. I really wanted to. And now there's, like, a lot of people that would love to see that effect done with Paranormal. Um, I, I think that would work out really cool, too. But um, So 2019 last year, your first year on Carnival. Mm-hmm. What was the transitional phase from that? going from a maze into streets it was it was a big difference like people don't really realize how different it is from being in a maze where it's a controlled environment you know you go in scare someone and reset for streets you don't really reset out there you kind of just scare and move on you don't ever really stop kind of go back and be able to think okay what can i do now it's you gotta have you have to go 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 right and It took me about a week or so maybe to kind of get into the movement of it. But everyone on Boardwalk uh, Boardwalk was super helpful. You know, if you needed any help, there was someone always there to walk with you, run with you. Right. So you always felt like you had someone if you had any, like, issues or anything, which was really nice. Nice. Yeah. No, I, I think that's that's what's really cool. I've seen a lot with the, uh, the street scare zones is a lot of them are like a family. So everybody has each other's backs, which is really cool, especially uh, – out there with, with crowds, you never know how crowds will be. You know, you don't know if someone's gonna be a dick and hit you on accident or on purpose or uh, and everything. So I, I noticed that you guys have each other's backs out there, which is a huge like uh, thing. No matter what, like if you guys don't like each other or not, it's you guys versus the uh, the audience out there. You know, you guys gotta watch out for one another, um, especially with the the tough crowds out there sometimes. But no, I think with uh, a scare zone like Carnival, I love the the whole concept of everybody has their own character, but it's all referred back to that kind of theming, which I think is really cool. Uh, I mean, you see so many different things within the scare zone that, like, you see like a firefighter, you'll see like a, a teddy bear, you know. You see, a, <laughs> there's one that reminds me of a uh, of a clown version of Slash with the top hat and the and the the like the curly hair. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, but I, every time I see him, I've seen him like the last three years that I've gone. I always call him Clown Slash because he just has that like vibe to him. So you have to tell him that now. Hey, you're the Clown Slash now. Yeah, you're 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 uh, the clown version of Slash, man. It's it's, it's cool. <laughs> just give him a nice guitar out there, and he he can do do be doing solos like every every like twenty minutes or something like that. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> that would now be... that's all I'm gonna be thinking about. Yeah. That would be so funny. Um, so, uh, with Carnival, I mean, what has been some of your favorite memories this last season that really shook up or really brightened the whole experience for you on streets? Oh, gosh. I don't even know. Definitely, I think the music that they had this year definitely helped kind of everyone be able to go out there and go crazy, I guess you could say. Right. And then... Just being able to work with everyone, because you could be totally different characters, but you could still manage to kind of run with someone and be able to kind of create that little story that you have with them right. that can kind of transfer to the guests, even if you're only scaring them for 30 seconds. Oh, gosh, what was... I think definitely walking kazoo around like a dog was an interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that was one of those... It happened so fast. I didn't even realize what was going on in 30 seconds. It's happening. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess this is how we're going right now. Right. I, but, I think, yeah. I, uh, I especially love those type of moments, too, where, like, you just kind of – something happens, and then you just roll with it. Um, yeah. I love those because, it, honestly, it, it makes for, like, such – depending on what you're trying to uh, accomplish and, and tell, like, of a story of some sort, but – it makes for such like great improvisation, like just to see how they can react on the spot. And mm-hmm. I noticed that a lot with um, a bunch of scare zones who who really would just take with what that was shot at them and just roll with it. And I, I really love doing that. Carnival was very famous for doing that too. I've seen a lot of instances where someone's working on something with someone, 
and then someone else sees that and joins in and expands to that storyline, which I love. Um, and you just mentioning that uh, you rolling around with Kazoo with it like a dog. I mean, it's something that like he probably brought in, and you just were like kind of figuring out for a little bit, and you're like, all right, I see what we're gonna do, and then you just kind of jumped in. What's what I'm even trying to sit here and remember how that even like got brought up, like how we started doing that. I don't even remember. Like so much crazy stuff happened to where thinking about it, you're just like, oh yeah, you know, I walked around with him and he was like a dog or this happened. And people on the outside think, what are you talking about? Like, that sounds totally crazy. But when you know how it like goes, it's like, oh, okay. Like they do that every night. That's just whatever. (laughs) It's just, it's just a normal night in Carnival. (laughs) Oh yeah. Um, Carnival. It was so not normal to where it, it was normal. Like crazy stuff was just our thing. That was just the thing, man. That's the, that's the theming of the of the uh, the scare zone right there. It's just like you walk into Carnival, and if you're expecting one thing, you're gonna get something that throws you a curveball, which I love. Uh, oh yeah. And that was there was a lot of moments that I caught on film this this past season uh, of stuff that just happened to be like that. Like I think, for instance, I remember uh, one of the one of my favorite things to see in that scare zone all the time were the twins. Oh, yeah. You never knew what was going to happen with them. I miss them so much. I miss everyone. Right. Damn it. Damn you, COVID. I know, right? Freaking killing it for everyone. Quarantine and and everything. But, yeah, I mean, I think that's what just makes you guys so unique. I mean, you look at a thing like Ghost Town where they kind of have to be a little bit more serious and and tell, you know, like this story. They kind of have this set story. um, And they're trying to sell you that story. You look at the hollow, the same kind of thing. It's a more serious vibe, and, as well as um, Forsaken Lake. But when, when you go into Carnival, it kind of brightens up a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. you're used to the whole, the whole fog and, and the dark, dim lights, and and like the, a lot of pitch black darkness. But when you go into a, a scare zone like Carnival, you're looking at it like a board, like a it's this this normal boardwalk that just gotten taken over by a bunch of like these clown characters, which I love. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that that actually um, rises the question, being that Carnival is a more like open kind of lit up scare zone. Is it a little bit harder for you to accomplish the scares that you need to accomplish every night? I think so in certain aspects. I mean, clowns seem to be a thing that just make people uncomfortable, like from when they first see you. So they're already coming in, they're already scared a little bit. So you could be walking by them and like barely move towards them and they're already freaking out right but you definitely did i noticed at least for myself there was some times where you would kind of have to sneak up on people more because they could see you so easily right and if they turn around they basically get you and it's kind of over yeah it's one of those but, pe- one of those things where you got to throw people off guard walk in one way and you think you don't notice them but then boom oh yeah yeah. Exactly. Even if you walk by them, even for like a few feet, and then you turn around and go get them, that that just freaks them out even more. Right. No, I, I completely 100% agree. I mean, I, that's why I think I have a ton of respect for all the people in, in Carnival, because it is a more difficult scare zone to work than the others. Uh, of course, the others, you have a place to kind of kick back and hide if you want to you wanna hide for a scare in, in the shadows and stuff. But with Carnival, it's kind of it seems like it's kind of just go, go, go. Uh, back and forth in your zone, uh, so that's why I think I have a ton of respect for the for those characters in, in Carnival because they have to go out and accomplish that goal. And if I must say, every freaking night that I went, you guys did. So you guys did a fantastic job. Thank you. Our part of what helped me definitely was like my props, like my knives, my cockroaches. And it's funny because I would have guests who would visit all the time. They'd come walking in if I didn't have any of the cockroaches on me, if they were back in my area or whatever. They'd be like, oh, where are the cockroaches at? Like, the fact that people remember that stuff. Right. To me, it's so, like, crazy because I had one night. Someone actually went. I guess there was a store in Ghost Town, I think they said it was, where you could buy the cockroaches for, like, 50 cents. They came back with, like, 20 of them. Nice. And I'm like. What? I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is crazy. You gotta love those hardcore fans, man, that just show up just to go sit in those scare zones, man. That was, I think that was us for uh, Ghost Town this year, but I know that next year I, I want to spend more time, or whenever uh, Not Scary Farm opens back up, uh, hopefully mm-hmm. 2021, um, 
I want to sit in other scare zones just to just to kind of see everybody in because everyone's talented in their own way. I've seen what Ghost Town has to bring to the table. Now I want to see what all these other scare zones have to bring because I know there's so many talented people out there just from what I've seen glimpses of just going through the scare zones. Um, but I love all the the hardcore fans who will come and support you guys. I mean, that's, I think that's an awesome thing and and. I've even seen some people go as far as bring their iPads and stuff and start sketching out some of the characters. Oh, yeah. There, there'd be a couple guys. They'd be in Boardwalk all night. I would see them every time I walked by. They'd be gone for maybe 20 minutes of the whole night, and they're just in there people watching. Right. I think it's it's the best. I mean, I've seen so many funny things happen doing that. I've seen people get dropped. I've seen people uh, run. I've seen people... Just some of the best scares I've seen are were sitting down in a certain area, and I, I can only imagine that's that's how it would be like in, in Carnival. Because like you said, people have that uncomfortability of, of clowns. Oh yeah. Um, like the minute you lock eyes with someone, you can already tell whether or not they're scared or not. It's just that mm-hmm. kind of sense with with clowns. Um, so, and correct me if I'm wrong. You received uh, an award this year, right? Um, not at our banquet, but in, like, the, um, uh, zone. Right. They kind of give, like, a behind-the-scenes award. It's, like, Veteran of the Week, Rookie of the Week, stuff like that. It was the third weekend, I believe it was. I got the Rookie of the Week one. Nice. So that was pretty nice. It was definitely a pick-me-up. Like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm doing something right in here. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Even if it's, like, for the week, I mean... That just shows you, like, damn, my hard work's paid off. They actually are paying attention. I like that. No, that's really exactly. cool. No, I, I, I appreciate that. That's awesome. That's that's really cool. I mean, I'm a sucker for things when it comes down to, like, achievements and awards and stuff. I mean, I play Xbox, and I have to get achievements left <laughs> and right. Like, I, there's no doubt. There's no way around it. Like, if I get an achievement, I get all excited because I got an achievement. Um, you got a screenshot and everything. You're like, oh, I got that. <laughs> yep. I just, I just look at like I, my achievement score is like a big thing, a big deal about me. So like when I'm playing video games, I'm always like, I gotta have a bigger achievement score than you. Um, oh my god. <laughs> but that's that, that's just how I am, man. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm crazy about my video games, so I have to like try to perfect them or something. But no, that's really cool that you got that award. I mean, I think it's well deserved too. Uh, like I said, I I would go a couple nights and see you working. Um, and you did a great job. Uh, the one thing I love in a scare actor, too, um, no matter what, they never break character. And I saw that a lot with you every time at least I went through, which is really cool. Um, it's cool to break, I mean, for like a second if you know somebody, but mm-hmm. play it off like you in, exactly. within character, which I think is always funny, too. And I saw you, every time I saw you every night, like that, that never like was was you just had that game face on you were ready to go yeah it's definitely a every night you kind of have to go in and think like me like okay i'm not Corey anymore for the rest of the night i have to be rebel yeah because then even on break if you kind of take that like mentality of okay i'm not my character right now you lose it for the whole night right yeah yeah definitely so you have to zone in on that definitely definitely no i i i know that one for a fact you have to you have to kind of flip that switch on real quick after you you leave the backstage area and, and go into to that different character. Yeah, no. Um, I, I really think that a, a thing that um, a lot of people like to know, too, is uh, something that what, – what's something that really gets you into that zone? Like, do you listen to music or do you read or what do you, what do you yeah, want to get I, into that zone? I definitely do a lot of listening to music, and I kind of pace back and forth backstage. I always go to, like, the cafeteria, then go back to my box, sit there for a minute get up, go to Warehouse P, go sit down for a minute. I'm always, like, walking and listening to music because then it kind of gets me in that mentality of, like, okay, you're out there right now. How are you going to be walking? Right. And that's kind of what everyone does. Everyone always has, like, headphones in when they're getting makeup done, all that stuff. They always have something to kind of bring them to that character. Right, yeah, right. Um, What is one of your – what's some of your favorite style of music to really get you into that zone? Oh, God. Definitely, like, soundtracks from past years, especially okay. from Boardwalk. I definitely base it on, like, where I'm at. So, right. like, this year was easy. Like, past few years of Boardwalk, you can listen to that music. Um, and really, whatever anyone was listening to backstage, some people would have, like, their speakers be playing music for everyone. I don't know. What did I listen to a lot? I don't even know. 
<laughs> Pesticide sitting here shrugging his shoulders at me like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just definitely not music, even from mazes. Right. Yeah, that's what I hear a lot, too, is a lot of people listen to, like, um, like scores or they'll listen to, like, different, like, sets to set their mood. Um, mm -hmm. I think one thing for me that always got me hyped up going to the event was uh, we had – me and my co-host Sammy had a playlist that we made that had just nothing but, like, fast punk and heavy, heavy metal. Uh, mm -hmm. So you're talking, like, bands like Pantera. You're talking bands like the Dead Kennedys. You're talking bands like Metallica, Maiden – you mm -hmm. know, all these bands, uh, freaking Bad Religion, and we would just play that playlist and just get ourselves hyped. We, like, had songs that we we hear to this day. We're just like, oh, yeah, Knots, there it is. It's like yeah. there's just designated songs that we just had ready for us every night in our car, and, and we would just rock out and have a good time. But, no, I think music is a really big um, a, a really big thing in life, not only, but um, in general for getting a character ready. I mean, I, I see that's a lot. That's a really famous one. A lot of people like to really just jam out and just kind of get out of that mentality real quick just to kind of get ready and stuff. So I think that's that's really big. That's what I hear a lot of scare actors do a lot too is, is listen to music. Um, Merrick being one of them, that guy is. Yeah, yeah <laughs> Merrick is definitely an interesting one. When you that is definitely someone like... I would love to be in a mosh pit with, hands down. Like I think everyone has seen the video of him with his headphones on backstage just jamming out. Yeah. I, I like I, I talked to him about that and I was just like, dude, one of these days I'm gonna take you to a show and we're gonna get in a pit and it's gonna be fun. Like <laughs> that guy's something else. Um, so obviously, uh, as a character, you know, there's different scare tactics that you can use, and I know with of course the um, the rule obviously with the first year not letting people uh, slide and stuff. Would sliding be something that you would like to do in the future? So it was actually pretty neat this year. Um, I think they did it in all zones. Yeah, so they would allow, it was kind of like a sliding apprenticeship, basically, where you would be able to go out right. as a rookie or even if you were just interested in sliding and slide for, it was like an hour. It was usually the last hour of the night or depending on the night, if it was busy or not. But you could go out and slide for one hour with someone who would pass a sliding test who was a slider. And I was actually able to do that this year, and nice. it was actually pretty fun. Nice. It was. It was definitely tiring. It was a lot of. Am I gonna run into someone? Am I gonna hit someone? Will I be able to get up and not fall over? Right. But, I think I'd be interested. Maybe doing it for a year. I don't know if I would want to do it every single year or even every night. Right. But, yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun being able to go out and just, kind of give people that little element of surprise that usually you can't give them right no yeah and, and i think um you know with sliding it's it's like really uh it's a dope scare tactic and it's it's really cool to use um but like you said for some people it probably will get tiring and and some people um i i think with the, with that it's like it's always about staying fit so a person like me no, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm off the board. I can tell you that right now. I, I, the, the fit is not in my vocabulary. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. Like, all these people that go out there and slide, it's like, oh, my gosh. I give them the way I would probably be able to do that as heavy as they do. Right, yeah. Um, like, no, I, I, it looks like it's fun. I, I just – I am so paranoid about doing anything like that ever since I broke my ankle. So it was like every little thing I do now is just like <laughs> – I'm on paranoia. It's like, <laughs> I'm just scared of getting surgery again. I mean, surgery, don't get me wrong, was a fun experience because I got to sleep for like four hours. And <laughs> when I woke up, I was like so dazed from the, the freaking drugs that they gave me. But <laughs> other than that, it's like I'm not looking forward to going for recovery again and all that. That was kind of boring. Um, but nonetheless, I, I think that's really cool that they let you guys have that kind of um, experience to, to kind of test it out this year to see – yeah. Um, if you are interested in doing it, here's a little test run. And if you really want to do it next year, then go for it. Uh, that's really cool. Um, what is one of your favorite scare tactics that you like to use out there? You mentioned that you used a lot of props and stuff. What was some of your favorite ones that you, that you did that a lot of people that you got a lot of people with? Definitely my cockroaches. That was a big one. The knives. I even got a couple people with glow sticks, which... I, did. I don't even know, but I would put them in my hair just 
because I had them and I'd pull one out at someone and they'd lose their mind as if it was a knife or something. <laughs> I but. love it, dude. Those glow sticks, I, I, I remember starting to see those more at the end of the season. Those those made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. It, it was pretty... I don't even know how I got so many of them. It was just, I think people were kind of just out there with them and, you know, they'd be backstage and I'm just like, okay, here, I'm going to take a bunch of these and just take them out there and see what I can do with them. And right. cause it's definitely a lot of trial and error. Like you take stuff out, see if it works. If it doesn't move on to something else, if it does, that's something you have. I think I remember one person in the hollow actually used uh, glow sticks as Wolverine claws, which I thought was hilarious. Oh. <laughs> um, and it, 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 the way he had him set up it just made me laugh and the first thing I saw I said when I saw that was oh it's Wolverine he was short like him and everything he had the oh long hair God. going it was just it was a whole a whole freaking the whole nine yards it was awesome um, yeah I think yeah I mean getting getting really creative with your scares is, is a big thing too and I, and I see that a lot with, with Carnival they, they really know how to really make you laugh but when you're least expecting it get that scare which I, i've noticed a lot like yeah. they'll go for that comedy route but then they'll get the scare when you when they when they know they have you when you guys know that you have us in, in your sites which i love that because for a second it makes you think that you're not in an event like a, a scary event because you're too busy laughing at what's going on but then they they, they snap that switch and, and scare you which i think is hilarious mm-hmm. so i i really um i really can't stress it enough love this scare zone um, I kind of hope it never goes, but we shall see. Uh, I'm hoping that it yeah. stays for a little bit longer, but uh, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I think we did pretty good this year. So right. we didn't really hear anything bad about, like, guests saying anything about Boardwalk or anything, or really anywhere. We heard pretty good things about this year, so right. hopefully, hopefully we were there for a bit. Right. So is there anywhere else you would like to uh, – to go as far as the park to scare at? Would you want to go to Ghost Town, uh, the Hollow, anywhere else, or do you want to stay on Boardwalk? I think I could stay on Boardwalk for another year or two. I don't, everyone, I know everyone wants to go to Ghost Town. That's like the dream scare zone. Like you start working on it, you think, I want to go to Ghost Town. Right. I personally never really had that. Like to me, I'm like, I don't really want to be in the fog and stuff. I'm having fun being out in the boardwalk area the lights all that right and i don't the only other place i could maybe see myself going to would be the hollows okay but i'm i'm pretty happy in boardwalk for right now so that's awesome no i mean with a character like yours too i mean it really brings that helps bring that story to life in boardwalk so that's that's really good to hear that you are saying like you, you would love to stay at boardwalk maybe another year or two see how that goes and maybe expand that character that you have, which is really cool. Um, other than that, though, would if you can go scare at any other event as far as, like, Horror Nights or Queen Mary or anything, which Ooh. event would you go to? Oh, I don't – I've never thought about that. Like, obviously in the off-season you kind of think, okay, do I want to go somewhere else? But if I had the opportunity – I don't know, because honestly, I've never really been to any of the other haunts except, like, Knott's and Queen Mary. I've never been to Universal. I was kind of hoping to go do that this year, but then right. they announced that today. Yeah. Um, I've never been to Fright Fest. So, I guess just because I've been there and I kind of see how everything works there, I'd probably go to Queen Mary. Nice. Oh, yeah, that'd be dope. I think uh, a character... So, would you would you try to... Would you try to bring the rebel character, or would you try to uh, make a whole new character for your, yourself over there? I think I would try and bring a new character. Rebel, I think for me, is definitely a... I made her at Knott's. Like, I don't even know if I would bring her back for another year. Right. Just because I had a good year with her this year, I kind of don't want to... I don't really know what else I'd be able to do with her. So, yeah, I think I would definitely try and bring a whole new other character for another haunt. Another thing I, I want to touch up on because I do follow you on Instagram and it is stunning when I see it is you have your own characters that you do photo oh, yeah. shoots with, which I think I do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you do an amazing job 
bringing your own characters to life as far as like your own cosplays and stuff. So talk to us a little bit about a little bit about that. How's that been? Um, it's actually been pretty good, you know, with everything going on. I haven't really been able to bring them out. Um, I have Rory, who I basically, honestly, based Rebel off of. Right. I kind of made her into a, I don't know if it's called, like, an anti-her, but I made the opposite of Rory, who's, like, a dark character, no color, no nothing, just very mellowed out. And then you have Rebel, who, Bordock, she's crazy, she's running around everywhere doing who knows what. Right. Um, I have her, I have Tater Tot, who I brought out from Trick or Treat. I have my rabbit mask from there. And, oh gosh, I feel like I have so many characters, I can't even, like, keep track of them anymore <laughs> at this point. <laughs> um, but that's, it's so easy for me to create these characters because I sit here and I start missing Han, I watch videos and I go, you know what, I just want to make another character. Right. Just for whatever. Plus having the photo shoots and stuff, it kind of gives me that haunt fix that I need to get through the year. Right. No, definitely. And I think that's really a, a creative aspect right there is that you could just literally sit there and watch like haunt stuff. And then just like, like as you're, as you're kind of doodling and stuff, you could just think of a character that's like super creative right there. That's really cool. Um, and I think that really helps too. Like if you ever, like I said, if you ever wanted to go to Queen Mary, you kind of have a character in mind that maybe you created that you want to base off or maybe with Queen Mary it just kind of inspires you to create something new, you know what I mean? So I think that's yeah. that's really that's a really cool talent to have on your um on you, you know? It's like it's just something that you can just kind of if you're like, "All right, so this is what I want to go for. This is the character that I'm trying to go for and this is her name and this is what she does." So I think it's that's really cool. Really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um but I see a lot of your photo shoots, of course, with uh, I forget there's a there's a channel that on 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 Facebook. What are they called? Or not Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, that posts all those pictures all the time. Um, and I seen you through that as well uh, with those LA meetups and stuff, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, so that's what are they story. Was it called like story? Story. Yeah, there's story there's a couple yeah. of them. There's Story Films. Story Films, which, I've seen him. Yeah, that one. And then there's Creep Meat, who, that's actually pesticide meat. So we're always out there doing stuff for that. Nice. But, yeah, stuff like that, it's it's crazy how you could just get out there. And if you have a character that you don't even know if it'll work or not, you go out there and people love it. Right. No, that's that's really cool. I think I've I've been slowly designing something because it's like going to these haunts it's like man i want to create something it's like really cool i mean i see all these people outside of haunt or during haunt and they have all these amazing characters and i was like it really kind of inspired me to create something uh so for all you people out there yes i am working on something with me and my sister it's a uh, i was gonna say have you thought about coming to work a haunt or anything i have um it's been the question that a lot of people ask me like why don't you just work these things dude it's like i would love to within a heartbeat but i think with everything that i do on this channel um uh I, it's really a sacrifice that i gotta take because it's mostly it's mostly me covering all these events so it's like the first couple of weekends all these events will open up that's like when we're the busiest and i mm -hmm. really wouldn't be able to start officially until like maybe three or four weeks in which kind yeah. of is a bummer but yeah I, I i want to so bad it's been a dream of mine to work a, a haunt of some sort but um, as much as I love, I would love to work there. I, I, I am equally in love with just going as a guest and supporting each and every one of you guys. So, um, yeah, that's, it, it's something that I, I hopefully maybe one day if the stars ever align, right, I'll, I'm going to jump on it a hundred percent. Yeah. I say do it. There's, there's definitely some interesting things you'll run into working this job, but to me personally, it's been one of the best jobs ever. You make some good friends, you get funny and great memories with people right. and scaring people like we all say we basically get paid to be like mean to people <laughs> right you get, you get put you get put honestly you get paid like an actor does to, to play dress up and become a character which i think <laughs> is awesome on and all that stuff which, which i think is fun like honestly like I, I think i don't remember who said it but an actor says dude i get paid to play dress up and and act in front of a camera like yeah, that's 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 like the American dream right there. Get paid to dress up as different things and and go out there and and to scare people. And I, I think that's really cool. Um, one last thing I want to ask you before we we log off today. It 
and it's been a an amazing uh, show today that we've had. Um, what would you give advice for future characters who want to come into the to the industry? So many. Um, <laughs> definitely don't listen to what people say out there. There's going to be people guest wise and maybe even talent wise you go out there and they kind of will say things to get into your head whether it's negative comments they'll call you names whatever just don't even listen to them like you literally need to just block everyone out don't take anything personal because there will be people like that right and especially for the auditions before you even get hired people always people have messaged me before and they ask you know what do i do like how do you prepare for that i'm nervous I think you're going to be nervous every year because I still get nervous. Right. But it's like I tell everyone, you have to be okay with going in and looking like an idiot because you're going to. You're going to look dumb in front of the judges, <laughs> and that's what they want to see. If yeah. they're laughing, it's good, in my opinion. Right. Just go for it, and I like that. No, that's that's some of the best advice I think we've ever heard is just kind of just go out there and, and don't take no shit. Just be you, obviously, and, and, and block everyone out. Ignore it. And just have a fun time, basically. So, no, I think that's that's really good advice right there. And uh, for all you people who want to do this, uh, we, we've had tons of people give you tons of great advice. Then here's another one to add to that belt. Uh, if you want to go back and watch all those, I guarantee you, you'll probably have so much advice leading up to your audition that you will walk in there with yeah, the confidence. Yeah, you'll be the saying, most confident person in there. Yeah, saying, I got this. If we go, here we go. But yeah, uh, that's awesome. Already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's uh, it's a fun. It looks like it's a fun business uh, as far as as doing this uh, every night, and it's equally as fun going in as a guest and and recording it for for uh, YouTube and for every, the whole world to see. Because um, I think with with what we do as far as uh, you know media and stuff, it's 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 more about to get the word out there of these events to to come down and check them out. Now there is, of course, uh, certain restrictions that you have to use as far as uh, when you when you're gonna do it. Of course, every time if you're gonna go record an event, be very respectful of these characters around you. They're there to do a job. You're there to do a job, but yeah. get stay out of their way. Don't put the camera up in their face. Don't you know film yeah. off from a distance. Yeah. You know. And please, for the love of haunt, do not put flashes in our yes. face. Turn your phone camera flashes off. No flashes. We don't want to be on your Snapchat with your flash hole in our face. Right. Just if you're going to record a video, <laughs> record it without the freaking flash. And don't go up to a scare actor asking if they'd be in your video. Because I can tell you the answer right now. They're going to ignore you and walk away. Exactly. Simple and if you come up and ask, can I take a picture of you? The answer will always be no. No. Because exactly. we are not allowed to take pictures with you. And we wish people would understand that more. But people get mad when we say we can't take pictures with them. But it's not us. I'm 99% sure if we were allowed to take pictures with you, we would love to, but we can't. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Not right. our fault. Don't take it out on us. They're there to bring the story to life and, and scare you. That's what you pay your mm -hmm. ticket for. So uh, just be respectful of all scare actors alike and um, just let them do their jobs. Don't be assholes. And uh, <laughs> you guys should be uh, having a, a good time all around. Uh, so yep. thank you so much, Corey, for being on the show today. I really appreciate yep. it. It was really cool to talk with someone else in Carnival. Um, and I, I look forward to hopefully seeing you out there again, um, hopefully after this whole pandemic stuff ends. I yeah, mean, definitely. It's, it's been a wild roller coaster. We've already gotten two events canceled this year. Um, and I hope the other two events uh, or the other three events uh, will – word something pretty soon as far as canceling or not uh but just know that if something gets canceled this year don't take it to heart they're doing it for the safety of both the actors and the guests they want everyone to be safe they don't want anyone to get catch the virus of any sorts uh they're doing it for the best of the of the audience and in my book if the haunts are doing that that's much respect for you guys because mm -hmm. they are willing to sacrifice you know the hard work and money and everything put into this to keep the safety of you guys so it, yes it, next year you yeah. know there's always next year we'll come back better next year right just kind of need a break just with everything going on right I, i'd rather everyone stay home and and be safe uh, especially the characters because they're probably more likely to catch it over us mm -hmm. 
and that's that's a no-no for for me at least because there's a lot of talented people out there uh Corey included and we want those talented people to keep returning so all right with that in mind thank you guys so much for watching this uh episode of the podcast we hope you guys enjoyed another scare actor interview i had a great time Corey, you're an amazing person keep doing what you're doing thank you. um and if you guys enjoyed that of course hit that like button and leave some comments down for Corey. make sure that you keep it positive because we want to see all your positivity keep going of course follow us on social media instagram and twitter at the knights of horror and at knights of horror check out our merch shop links in the description below and you guys wear a mask stay safe we will see you guys next time <laughs>